My name is David, a 21-year-old who has recently lost his mother to cancer. However, this narrative isn't centered on her passing. It delves into the tumultuous relationship with my father, who appears indifferent to our family's suffering and chose to travel the world, leaving me behind without a word for two years. The story I'm about to unfold is filled with unbelievable drama involving my father, my girlfriend, his mistress, and my sister. This tale is a testament to the chaos that was a daily norm in our household, akin to being caught in a perpetual storm of conflict and upheaval. Growing up, our home was the epicenter of constant turmoil, marked by frequent clashes between my parents or the dramatic appearances of mistresses at our doorstep. This chaos became our version of normalcy, obscuring any memories of peace. To outsiders, our family might have seemed typical, but the reality within our walls told a starkly different tale. My parents, Leo and Mia, tated on the brink of divorce, while my older sister, Sophia, and I navigated our strained relationship, eventually becoming allies and she, my unwavering support. The dynamic shifted drastically when I was 17. My mother's long battle with cancer took a toll, culminating in her hospitalization, a moment that felt like a crushing blow to our family. Despite our efforts to reverse the tide, hope seemed elusive. Witnessing my mother's struggle was heart-wrenching, driving us to stay by her side with unwavering love and support until her passing. This ordeal transformed our family dynamics, solidifying Sophia as my pillar of strength. Conversely, my father remained unchanged. Following my mother's death, he left for an overseas journey, abandoning me in our family home. Shortly thereafter, Sophia also moved out to live with her boyfriend, leaving me, a 17-year-old, to navigate the complexities of adulthood alone. In an effort to manage, I decided to rent out a room in our house. The unexpected return of excitement to my life was a stark contrast to the quiet solitude I had grown accustomed to after my mom's passing, my dad's absence, and Sophia pursuing her own life. Navigating this tumultuous journey solo was a formidable challenge at such a young age, yet I was resolute in carving out my path amidst the upheaval. Throughout these solitary years, my sister's support was a constant, and despite missing our mother dearly, we found happiness and contentment in each other's company. The serene bond Sophia and I had rebuilt over four years was suddenly shattered, introducing a new wave of chaos into our lives. Time had marched on, and at 22, I had achieved some semblance of financial stability, with additional tenants in our home and steady employment at a local factory. Things finally seemed to be on an upswing. One afternoon, as I was spending time with my girlfriend Lily in my room, an unexpected knock on the door stirred curiosity. Lily speculated on who it might be, but I dismissed it as nothing significant. To my surprise, opening the door revealed my father exuding wealth and sophistication, marking our first encounter in two long years. I greeted him with feigned enthusiasm and he expressed keen interest in meeting Lily. The introduction was both awkward and suspicious, yet I proceeded. My father then led me to the living room, where he introduced me to Lucy, a middle-aged woman of striking beauty, revealed to be his fiancée. This development was hardly shocking, as Sophia and I had previously wagered on how quickly our father would remarry. I had anticipated a swift remarriage, while Sophia speculated it would take longer, reasoning that a habitual bachelor would not easily commit. It appeared Sophia had the right of it. I extended a polite greeting to Lucy, though the encounter felt undeniably awkward. My father attempted to ease the tension, suggesting Lucy freshen up while we prepare dinner. Observing my dad in the kitchen was an odd sight, given that our mom had always been the culinary heart of our home. The entire scenario seemed surreal. I excused myself, explaining to my father that Lily and I had prior plans and couldn't stay for dinner, 
citing pre-purchased movie tickets as our reason. Exiting the room, I was struck by the stark contrast in my father's behaviour. His newfound affection for Lucy juxtaposed against his historical neglect of my mother. A few days later, as I was engulfed in tenant paperwork in my room, a knock disrupted my concentration. Expecting anyone but who I found, I invited them in, only to see my father at the doorway, visibly uneasy. He sought to discuss my attitude towards Lucy and gauge my opinion of her. Without hesitation, I expressed my dislike and indifference towards her presence in my life. My blunt response seemed to ignite his anger. He questioned if my sentiments were tied to my mother's memory, to which I affirmed, criticising his lack of affection towards her and now his overt display of affection for Lucy. His reaction escalated, labelling me as troublesome and denouncing my mother as a drug addict who neglected their marriage. A claim so absurd it bordered on humorous. I challenged him to prove such allegations, having never witnessed any such behaviour from my mother. His response was dismissive, branding me naive and pressuring me to accept Lucy, threatening consequences if I continued to affect her negatively. Overwhelmed by distress, I demanded he leave. His parting words, suggesting a preference for the known over the unknown and tarnishing my mother's memory, left me reeling with a tumult of emotions, sadness, anger, resentment, and a deep sense of loss for the gentle soul my mother was. The following day, as I was in the kitchen, Lucy approached, claiming to understand my stance and expressing a desire to bridge the gap between us. However, my request for space seemed to agitate her, her fists clenched as if restraining a physical response. Despite the tension, I maintained my composure and excused myself to prepare for work. That evening, observing Lucy and my sister sharing a moment on the balcony stirred unease within me, particularly about Lucy's motives. My sister's revelation of her engagement upon my arrival was met with an inscrutable reaction from Lucy, deepening my suspicions. Hours later, seeking solace in routine, I prepared to make dinner after a relaxing bath. Entering the kitchen, I was greeted by the sight of my father, sister and Lucy seated together. A tableau that painfully echoed memories of my mother. My father's casual mention of their planned vacation triggered thoughts of the travels he never shared with my mother especially when she could have benefited from them due to her health. Driven by frustration, I openly challenged him, a confrontation that Lucy and my sister attempted to defuse, urging me to let go of the past. Overwhelmed, I left the house in search of a distraction, unable to shake the feeling of isolation in my concerns about Lucy. Returning home to the quiet aftermath of the evening, I realised Sophia must have departed, However, a faint conversation from the central toilet piqued my curiosity. Stealthily, I approached, overhearing Lucy's agitated conversation. Her words about me were disparaging, labelling me as an obstacle in her path. The revelation of her intent to ingratiate herself with my family before enacting a concealed agenda was alarming. Lucy's claim of having my father wrapped around her finger and her impatience for an opportune moment to unfold her plans sent a chill through me. Her frustration over not finding the mansion's documents and her disdainful plans for our home, demolishing our ancient mansion for a modern replacement, revealed a cold calculation beneath her facade. As Lucy ended her call, hinting at a return to my father's side, I retreated to my room, eager to dodge any potential encounter. The revelation that Lucy, adored by my father, was scheming for her own gain, left me oscillating between relief and fury. The thought that her true motives might soon come to light was a small comfort, yet the immediacy of this discovery was unsettling. Reaching out to my sister with the details of my eavesdropping, her response was dismissive, attributing my concerns to personal bias and insecurity. Despite her scepticism, I couldn't shake the conviction that Lucy's intentions were far from genuine. With a mixture of dread and determination, 
I made my way to my father's study, contemplating the reception of my revelations. The memory of Lucy's deceitful conversation loomed large as I knocked. My father's puzzled welcome quickly turned ominous as he ushered me inside and then into the adjacent bathroom, his grip on my arm foreboding. His reaction was explosive, a flat denial of Lucy's duplicity, framing my concerns as jealousy. His refusal to consider my warnings culminated in a physical reprimand when he struck me, declaring Lucy's permanence in our lives. His next words were a devastating ultimatum, my departure from the family home before their vacation's end. This command, delivered with such finality, evoked a tumult of emotions, shock, sorrow, and a profound sense of betrayal. Tears were an involuntary response to the harsh realization that my father prioritized Lucy over his own child. Easily brushing aside my concerns was a bitter experience to endure. In that moment, overwhelmed by a whirlwind of emotions, I found the strength to confront my dad. I accused him of being blind to Lucy's deceit, lamenting it as pitiful. With the declaration that he was no longer a father to me, I exited the room, refusing to glance back. The resentment towards my father, which I had managed to suppress, surged to the forefront, fueled by his past mistreatment of both me and my mom. This resurgence of anger solidified my resolve to seek retribution. A few days into my tumultuous thoughts, a call from my sister momentarily distracted me. Her voice, brimming with excitement, announced the setting of her wedding date for the upcoming month. Her happiness was infectious and I congratulated her wholeheartedly. She mentioned her intention to inform our dad and Lucy, which reignited my concerns. Taking a deep breath, I decided to voice my worries to my sister. She listened attentively, urging me to reconsider my stance on Lucy, suggesting that Lucy might indeed care for our family and that our dad seemed content with her. Despite her reasoning, I remained skeptical of Lucy's true character. The following day found me engrossed in a chess game with my girlfriend, Lily. My attention oscillated between the game and Lily whose intelligence and beauty never ceased to amaze me. She'd have been my pillar through the dark days following my mom's demise, and I was profoundly thankful for her presence in my life. As I contemplated a future with her, considering the perfect moment to propose, Lily excused herself, leaving me alone with my thoughts and plans for our life together. As Lily stepped away, her phone vibrated with an incoming message, catching my attention. Acting on impulse, I reached for her phone to glance at the notification, and that's when the reality of the situation hit me. A message from my dad illuminated the screen, and the words I read left me reeling. It was an intimate message, coupled with a mention of money sent for shopping, a clear indication of a relationship far beyond what I could have imagined. The discovery felt like a seismic shock, dismantling the foundation of trust and love I had for both my father and Lily. Each message I scrolled through unveiled further depths of betrayal, detailing plans to leave Lucy and discussions belittling my ability to provide and care for Lily. The realization that Lily too was part of this deceit was a devastating blow, rendering me speechless and shattered. I was on the brink of confronting my father directly phone in hand, when an unexpected knock at the door momentarily diverted my turmoil. Regaining a semblance of composure, I invited the visitor in, only to find Sophia entering with a visibly troubled demeanour. Her appearance, marked by sadness, hinted at another layer of unwelcome news. Before I could inquire about her distress, Lily re-entered the room, oblivious to the tension. Her cheerful greeting to Sophia, juxtaposed against the backdrop of my recent discovery, fueled a growing inferno of betrayal and anger within me. However, I managed to restrain my emotions, choosing to wait for the right moment to address the betrayal. Sophia's emotional breakdown, unable to hold back her tears any longer, drew a collective gasp from both Lily and myself. With the room charged with tension, I directed Lily to leave, 
my voice betraying the turmoil and coldness I felt towards her. Her reaction, a mix of confusion and worry, mirrored the complexity of the emotions swirling between us. Lily left the room with hesitation, her departure leaving Sophia and me in a charged silence. My focus shifted entirely to Sophia, whose distress was palpable. The air was thick with the weight of her sorrow, a clear signal that she had been through an ordeal that had left her visibly shattered. What's wrong, Sophia? I asked, my voice laced with worry. Sophia took a moment to compose herself before unraveling the tale of disappointment that had led to her current state. She described her attempt to share the joyous news of her wedding date with our father in Siena, only to be met with cold indifference and neglect. Their lack of response and eventual dismissive attitude had been a crushing blow, leading Sophia and her fiancé to cancel their wedding plans and opt for a simple courthouse marriage, a decision made all the more painful by the absence of familial support on her fiancé's side. As Sophia recounted her story, anger surged within me, a tempest fueled by our father and Lucy's callous disregard for their own daughter. The depth of their indifference was unfathomable, igniting a resolve within me to act against this injustice. Reassuring Sophia that our happiness wasn't contingent on our father or Lucy's approval, my mind began to weigh the plan of retribution. The pain they had inflicted wouldn't go unanswered. Seated beside my sister, I felt a strategic calmness take over, plotting each move with precision. The emotional turmoil inside me was intense, yet I knew it had to be channeled into a calculated response. This wasn't going to be easy, but my determination was unwavering. They would have to face the consequences of their actions. As I plotted our course of action, it became clear that Lily, unwittingly, would play a crucial role in this scheme. By maintaining a facade of forgiveness and normalcy, I plan to use her proximity to our father to unveil the full extent of his duplicity. The strategy involved a delicate balance of appearance and subterfuge, all aimed at exposing the betrayal that had so deeply affected our family. Beneath my composed exterior, Resentment towards Lily simmered, yet I masked my true sentiments, feigning forgiveness to align with my broader strategy. As Lily re-entered the room, her demeanor laden with remorse, she attempted to articulate an apology. Her words tangled in a web of guilt. I faced her with a stoic expression, having anticipated this moment, yet still grappling with the sting of betrayal. Lily represented not just a personal loss, but a pivotal element in my plan for retribution. Acknowledging her apology, I reserved my forgiveness, indicating that trust needed to be rebuilt over time. Her plea for redemption, marked by tears and declarations of love, left me conflicted between the drive for vengeance and residual feelings. Reluctantly, I agreed to consider her efforts towards amends, stipulating my forgiveness would be contingent upon her cooperation with my unfolding plans. In the days that followed, a distressing turn of events unfolded during an evening at the movies with Sophia and her fiancé. A message interrupted our viewing. An invitation from Lucy to her wedding with my father, scheduled on the very day intended for Sophia's celebration. Sophia's immediate emotional breakdown prompted a swift exit from the theatre, sparing the public from witnessing her despair. Seething with indignation, I excused myself to contact my father. His casual greeting only intensified my anger. I confronted him about the insensitivity of their wedding date, expressing my disdain for their blatant disregard for Sophia. His apologetic response, devoid of genuine concern, did little to quell my outrage. His actions not only perpetuated the pain inflicted upon our family, but also mirrored a deeper, unresolved contempt that seemed to have roots in his relationship with our mother. With a bitter acknowledgement of his contributions to our suffering, I lambasted him for the ongoing hurt, his apparent indifference towards our well-being, and the theft of joy from what should have been a celebratory time for Sophia. Caught in the heat of my emotions during the call with my father, 
I nearly let slip the details of my plot. Swiftly, I collected myself and abruptly ended the conversation. With rage fueling my resolve, it was time to escalate my plans into action. Returning home, I summoned Lily, proposing a scheme to lure my father back under the guise of an unexpected surprise. Lily's initial resistance, coupled with her pleas for forgiveness, only intensified my resolve. Despite her reluctance, she eventually acquiesced, making the call that would deceive my father into walking straight into our setup. With the first phase successfully underway, I proceeded to the next step. I listed my father's lavish mansion for sale online, deliberately naming Lucy as the contact person. The listing immediately attracted a slew of eager buyers and Lucy, unknowingly playing into my hands, began organizing viewings and discussions. Upon my father and Lucy's return, each ensnared by their own covert motives, I had already laid the groundwork for Lucy's predictable move towards the house documents. I prepared a decoy box filled with counterfeit papers in my dad's room, ensuring the real documents were securely hidden within my own space. The situation unfolded with an almost cinematic suspense as Lucy, under the pretext of needing the restroom, quickly exited the scene. Meanwhile, I engaged my father in idle chatter, all the while vigilant of Lucy's manoeuvres. Her hasty departure signalled my cue. I found the decoy box exactly where I left it, now devoid of its contents. The stage was set for the final act of my plan. I summoned Lily once more, detailing a straightforward yet cunning strategy. Intoxicate my father to the point where he would unwittingly transfer ownership of the house to me. Concealed behind a curtain, I watched the plan unfold with bated breath. Lily's performance was nothing short of remarkable, effortlessly leading my father into inebriation. At the peak of his vulnerability, she poised herself to strike with our decisive move. Okay, baby, I'm in. Lily proclaimed, her enthusiasm dripping with insincerity. My father, in his drunken stupor, beamed with joy, babbling about grand promises and boasting of worldly tours he envisioned sharing with her. Sensing the perfect moment had arrived, I subtly signalled Lily to strike while the iron was hot. She laid out her condition for accepting the proposal. The house must be signed over to her. Eager and unfocused, my father didn't hesitate, his hand unsteady as he signed away the ownership amidst his drunken declarations of love, attempting a kiss that Lily deftly avoided. Rising, her tone shifting to cold decisiveness, Lily announced she was through. I emerged from hiding, ready to revel in our scheme's success, only to be met by her unexpected laughter. Her amusement bewildered me, her next words even more so. Really, David? Did you think I hadn't caught on? It appeared she had anticipated a manoeuvre like this, viewing it as her chance to claim wealth by pretending to cooperate. She boldly claimed the house as hers, asserting the documents bore her name. Confident in her mistake, I urged her to check again. The moment of truth hit hard as she read the documents, her laughter dying, replaced by a dawning realisation of her misinterpretation. The papers fell from her hands as she crumbled into tears. Collecting the documents, I left the room, a mix of vindication and triumph coursing through me. The next day, I awoke with a sense of unparalleled accomplishment, feeling like a hero who had outwitted a formidable foe. I woke up basking in the glow of triumph, only for the peace of my morning to be disrupted by a cacophony from outside. Swiftly getting dressed, I descended to investigate the source of the tumult. The scene that unfolded was one I had somewhat anticipated. Lucy, amidst a frenzy of police activity and public outrage, caught in the aftermath of her fraudulent endeavours. She had attempted to sell the house using counterfeit documents, and now her deceit was laid bare for all to see. As officers handcuffed her, despite her protests of innocence, the drama escalated with my father's appearance. Dishevelled and seemingly hungover, likely a result of Lily's liberal pouring, 
he was quick to absorb the gravity of the situation. His initial shock morphed into fury, denouncing Lucy as a swindler and demanding her removal, yet oblivious to the bigger picture unfolding. It was then, amidst his confusion and anger, that I revealed the true ownership of the house. The revelation hitting like a thunderbolt, his emotions shifting from anger to utter disbelief. I savoured the moment, detailing the orchestration of my plan and the downfall of him and his manipulative partner. His reaction was a complex tapestry of regret and anger. But my empathy for him had long since evaporated. I left him standing there, a man forced to reckon with the web of deceit he had helped weave. However, the day's drama was far from over. My father, in a desperate bid to reclaim control, returned with law enforcement at his heels, accusing me of forgery and theft. The officers, caught in the middle of our familial dispute, demanded to see proof of legitimacy. With a flourish, I presented the genuine documents, the tension peaking as all eyes fixated on the unmistakable authenticity of my father's signature. The atmosphere was electric, his reaction a mixture of shock and realisation, as the irrefutable evidence of his own undoing was laid out before him. Confronted with my father's fury, I stood unyielding as he attempted to strike me in a moment of blind rage. Swiftly, I caught his arm mid-swing, my voice steady and resolute as I issued a stark warning against ever attempting violence towards me again, reminding him of the legal ramifications of his actions. Defeated and overwhelmed, he collapsed into the couch, surrendering to tears. It was a moment of both victory and sorrow as I firmly told him he had three weeks to leave, making it clear I never wished to see him again. Reflecting on the tumultuous events, it's evident that this saga of revenge and familial betrayal has been nothing short of dramatic. Some may argue that the actions taken were extreme, questioning the legality of the house transfer given my father's inebriated state. This story has indeed traversed a myriad of complex and painful parts. From discovering a betrayal by a loved one to confronting a deceitful family member. Faced with such betrayal and abandonment, the decisions made were fueled by a desire for justice and self-preservation. Set against a backdrop of loss and deception, it prompts a deeper question about the limits of retribution and the ethical considerations of actions taken in moments of profound betrayal. In a scenario marked by grief, betrayal, and the search for autonomy, the choices made reflect a range of human emotions and reactions to being wronged. It opens up a conversation on what one might do when faced with similar circumstances, where the lines between right and wrong become blurred by emotional turmoil and the desire for vindication. This narrative, while extreme, sheds light on the complexities of human relationships and the lengths to which individuals might go to protect their dignity and seek recompense for wrongs endured. It invites reflection on the actions we choose in the face of betrayal and the consequences that follow, both legally and personally.